It doesn't have to be very locked down into like a ground. Um, in the past, we've done this with um, other animals. What was it? A, uh, a dodo bird. We did a dodo bird at one point where we modeled a dodo bird and we had the dodo bird running. But there's a lot more rig that goes into a dodo bird than a fish, okay? Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to Google Images and you're gonna find, or Bing Images, you're gonna find a picture of a fish. And you wanna find a large picture of a fish, okay? And we have to find it from the side. We don't wanna find a front view or a three quarter view or some weird view. Um, like that's really too far away and there's a branch covering him. This is a three quarter view, that doesn't work. Three quarter view, no. That one's okay, that one's all right. Uh, we want to find something like this is kind of ideal because it's very obvious of where the fish is and where the fish is not, right? So there's no fish right here. There's a fish right there, okay? So I'm going to save the fish. I'm going to go to my folder, 2540, work, fish, source images, fish. I could, didn't. Um, I made a new project. So just for review, I went to my project window. I went to new, I typed in Sarcona fish, put in my 2540 work folder, hit accept. And so now I wanna bring that fish in there. So I'm gonna go through just the general overview of all the steps we're gonna do in this. I'm not gonna do it to completion. I have a video where I walk you through completion. Well, it's like a speed, speed modeling video. Uh, oops. So I'm gonna go into my uh, side view. I'm gonna go to my image plane and import the image. So I want to use this picture of a fish as my way of modeling the fish. It makes it easier. If I have the fish right there, there he is. And I'm just gonna push him back. My grid is right here. So I like to have them away from the center of the grid. Okay, so just off the grid. Back into the side view. Right. Um, so now I need to go to a cube. So we're only going to use a few tools in here. And the idea with this is that we're um, doing very, very loose block modeling of this fish. So if you look, I'm just kind of moving these points to the extremes of the fish. So this is kind of like where his face starts here, right about there. And this is where his tail starts right about here, right about there. Okay. Then I'm gonna just insert edge loops. So I go to insert edge loop. You can go to uh, edit mesh or mesh tools to get to any of these tools that I'm using. I just shift right click and I get to insert edge loop. And I'm just gonna drop an edge loop here. Then I go to my vertices and I move it up and I move that one down. And then I go to insert edge loop, uh, add another one. You don't want to overload your surface. That is a definite no-no. Do not overload your surface with a bunch of unneeded geometry. Eventually, we're gonna have multiple copies of this fish all over the place. And if you have too many divisions, then your fish uh, will, your scene will just go incredibly slow. It'll take forever to render, and you will not be a happy camper. So should you do a lion fish? Uh, no. You could, uh, but you would just have a lot more work to do. You have a render farm, so I think you're fine. All right, so now I'm gonna grab this front face here. So I grabbed this face right there, and I'm going to extrude him, and then just pull it out to right there. Now, if the wireframe gets in my way, I turn it off, the, the grid. If this white background is a little bit too white for me, come on, I'll click on it, and I can change the color gain down and now it's a bit dimmer, so that way I can see exactly where my wireframe is. Okay, so my goal in this is to get these lined up as close as I can to the fish. Um, I don't want to create so many divisions that it's a perfect lineup, okay? It's not gonna be that. It's gonna be kind of like inset inside the fish. So I'm gonna add in, oops, back to object mode, back to insert edge loop, add another loop, there and there. Now in this animation, we're not opening and closing, bless you, the, mouth, the fish's mouth. The mouth is gonna be closed. We're gonna be too far away to do any type of animation with that. Um, he has a little fin there, it's fin there. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the face here. I'm gonna extrude this, pull it back to about here, make it a little bigger. Uh, and now about here, I'm gonna need to start to split this off. 
okay? So part of the fishtail is gonna come up, part of the fishtail is gonna go out. So I need a division going straight down the center. So I'm gonna add a loop. Then I'm gonna go to faces and grab the two faces right there. Okay, then I'm gonna extrude them. Now if I pull it out, you see they go together. But if I click this keep faces together off, now they're gonna go separate. Come on. There we go. So now I can just go to vertices, pull that up there, pull this down here. All right, so there's my really, really rough fish. Now, in the one view, he's a block. Yes, sir? Oh, how did you do the tail again? Uh, it's just extruding, so I'll just pretend there's a tail right here. Oh, okay. So it's extruding it, and then making sure we do keep faces together is off. Oops, okay. off. And then we have two separate pieces that we can move one here and one there. <laughs> it's a unicorn fish. It's a narwhal. All right, so once we have this, then I need to scale the fish correctly this way because he's too blocky. So I'm going to flatten him out like this. Then I can go to the edges. That. Is that symmetrical? Yes. Okay. And then I'm just going to scale these out. So all I'm doing is just scaling out the center of this. Yes. <laughs> it actually wasn't. All right, add that. There we go. Okay. So I'm trying to keep this nice and smooth so that it looks like it's thinner on the top, it gets a little chubbier, and then thinner on the bottom. Okay. And then his tail, obviously, these should be scaled in. So I flatten those out. These ones should probably be scaled in too, so I'll scale those in. This could be a little bit thinner, so I'll scale that in. There we go. So that's looking like a pretty uh, decent fish. I can probably grab these top ones here, squish those in a little bit more. And then the bottom, I'm going to leave it a little bit thicker than the top. There we go. Okay. So now if I hit three, you'll see that I get this nice, like, goldfish cracker. So I'm going to add some divisions to this even further. So I'm going to go back to my view. Um, I can use the insert edge loop here and here. That way I can add, come on. some divisions to kind of stretch this out. When we get into these areas, we're not gonna model every single one of these tail feathers there, or um, fins. We're just going to kind of position it like that, okay? Same thing here, we're just gonna push this to about there. Oops, it's gonna go here, this is gonna go here. So I'm just kind of like insetting it a little bit. And if it goes outside like it does here, I'll add a division and then just scoot it in. Okay, there we go. So you can see why you want a nice picture of a fish, because if you didn't have one, then it wouldn't work. Okay, so I'm just making sure all of these are inset. Because when I hit three, see how far it goes in? So I have to make sure it's already inset so we're nice and even. All right, that's good, good. So I can go in a little bit. A little bit. Uh, no, we're going to adjust it in a minute. There we go. Because when we paint on it, we want to make sure we have plenty of room. Um, okay, so now I need to add the fins. So what I want to do is I don't want to just grab here and extrude these fins because they're going to be really thick. Okay, it's like really thick fins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, duplicate it first in case I need to reference back to him. And I'll hide that one. And then I'm going to mesh smooth this, so now we actually have a smoothed out version of the fish. Okay. So now what I can do is go into my divisions and grab these, these, there, and I'll just do one at a time. So I'm going to extrude that, pull it out, and then just go through. 
and shape this to match that fin. Are you doing a passing map on it? We will, yes. So not in all, all the individual things are not necessary in this case. Correct. All right. So that's still pretty thick, but it's fine because I can grab those and scale it. Grab this, grab this, grab this, grab that. And then scale that in. Okay, now I'll do the same thing for the top. I'm going to grab the fins here. And I'm just holding down Shift and Control to add those in. Control to deselect. And then I can extrude, switch to the Move tool, and pull it out. Then switch to Vertices and move these into position. What's the difference between a fish and a piano? You can tune a piano, you cannot tune a fish. You really think you were going to get him with that one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've seen Rocky. Well, there you go. All, all of them. them. All six of them. Seven of them. There's seven. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Wait, no. Uh, no. There's not seven. Uh, there's Creed. Um, uh, it sure is. It's pretty much Rocky 1. <laughs> no, it isn't. No. Spoiler alert, that's the only one that Rocky loses in. Uh, he loses in the third one. But really loses. He really loses in the third one. I just mean like he like lost at the end. There's not a there's not a he happy ending. No, he loses in the second. In the first, first one. one. Yeah. The first one. I guess I'm not gonna watch Rocky. I know, thank you. If you haven't watched it, it's been around since the seventies. By now you're not gonna watch it. You're not gonna make me feel bad about that. Don't worry. No. All right. So that's good enough for that. All right. So there's our fin up top. All right. Now we have a little fin off the side here. So I'm just going to grab uh, one of these fins about where it's at here. And I'm going to extrude it and just scale it down and just reposition it. OK, so that's where it's going to come out of. So I extrude this. I'm going to pull it out, pull it back, scale it up. I'm just kind of rotating it and positioning it so that it um, looks nicer. There we go. Side view. This is a pretty big fin. I'm not going to be able to line this up perfectly, which is fine because of how we're going to have to texture it anyway. Are you doing this on both sides or no? This is just one side. Um, that fin, yeah, I'm going to have to mirror it because that's not going to go over. Uh, that should be good enough for that fin there. Okay. And then when we hit three, you'll see that it goes kind of thin like this. That's no big deal. All right, and then we go to our side view again. And then I just have this last fin that I have to extrude here. Well, just wait till we get the UV layout. <laughs> All right, so I'm just adding another division here just to kind of crimp this, squeeze it. Same thing here, another division right there. I want to add these extra divisions just so I have a nice dividing line from the other surface. Right there. And then this one here, there's not enough divisions on it to do anything, so I'm just going to add a couple divisions. That's good there. Okay. And then we'll add just a couple here. And one there. OK. So I need those divisions because eventually we're going to be animating this stuff. In order to animate them, I need to have divisions. I need vertices. I need something. Um, so that's cool. So now I'm going to mirror it. So I'm going to go to my mirroring options. Um, the mirroring options have changed. So if you're on 2016 without the extension, you don't have all of this stuff. Um, and it's actually, it seems like it's better. So I'm just going to pick the X direction, cut geometry, uh, weld it. There it is. Cool. And then I'll just verify that my merge threshold is really low. And I'll hit three, and everything looks good. Cool. 
Oops, a little bit crimpled right there. Uh, something going on. I'm just going to grab these points here, all cluster of them, and just go to Edit Mesh, Merge to Center. There we go. So that's nice and neat now. Okay. All right. So now that should be good. All right. So now I'm going to lay out the UVs for him. So to lay out the UVs, super quick, just go to. No, the fish is actually pretty easy to lay out the UVs for. Not like a scuba helmet. <laughs> <laughs> so I I assigned a surface shader. I'm assigning a checkerboard to the color. So I get this. Then I'm just going to go to my UVs, do a planar map in the X direction. So that's the side that the fish's side is facing. Keep image height width, project. What? No. Oh. Bounding box, not best plane. There we go. All right, so now that's perfect right there. So now all I have to do is just cut off the pieces. So I double click this edge going down the center. That should select it all the way down here. And I'm shift double clicking, making sure I grab all the way around it. I'm going to cut the edges. And then around each one of these, I'm going to cut the edges. So I'm just hitting G to redo that cut command. There we go. And now if I go to my UV editor, there's the fish just kind of like laid out. <clears throat> so if I go to shell, grab everything, unfold, there he is. Now uh, I have one spot here, this one, where this fin just needs a little bit more cutting. So I'm just going to double click this edge, do the same thing on this side, cut those UV edges, go to shell, grab everything, unfold it, and that's much better. Okay, now to test it out, I'm going to just scale up this entire thing. And as I scale it up, I should see this too far. Within reason, we see squares all over the place. Now there are still on here some areas that are not square. Um, so I'm just going to double click this there and cut it. And where's your buddy? That one? No. No, oh, I never cut this one off. That's why that one's off. <laughs> nice. Cut that one off. Grab these. Unfold. Make this bigger. Okay, so that looks better. It's not perfect, but it looks better. This one still needs a little bit of help. Where is he? I think you just had it. Oh, right there. Just gotta zoom in on him. Oh it's a very tiny. All right, so we'll grab this one. We'll cut it. It should. There's a hole right here. That's the hole that's connecting it to the fin. Oh, okay. I believe anyway. Let's see. Oh no, it's the hole in the bottom. All right. That's why I said I think you didn't get it. All right, so let's try that. Cut it. There we go. Now it's two pieces. And now we should be good to unfold it. It still doesn't like that piece. Very tiny too, though. It is. Well, watch this little hack. I'm just going to mirror it again. That'll work. And then all I have to do is just cut it down the center. Actually, do I even need to do that? see. Nope. Cool. Well, I'll just grab everything, unfold it. It lays out all the pieces nice. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. 
So now I shrink this down to fit. There's my fish. I should probably save this. Yeah, knowing you, I was trying to never save. Yep. <laughs> no, never. Uh, fish export. So now I'm exporting my fish as an OBJ because I need to be able to bring my fish into Mari and paint, on the and paint on the texture. And the texture part should go, again, relatively quick because um, if you're in the modeling class, we're very specific about certain areas. The fish, we're basically just like blasting each side of it and then that's it, just touching up some areas. So it's just like the projection in ZBrush? Yeah. Yeah, it's just right on the side, just right there, and it should work. Mari is just texturing, yeah. where ZBrush, uh, we would have to like import the geometry yeah. and then do a bunch of other stuff. It's like you take a human head that you model, you throw it in there, you add other things onto it, and make it even smoother than what it already was. Say you add um, uh, skin pores on it that you could never get in Maya because Maya is just you model it. Mari is just texture, but it doesn't get so deep as to get the skin pores. You're doing a like that. There we go. So my fish came in here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit one, two, three, four, five, or six until I get to the side view. It's two. Yeah, when Mari takes before it crashes, go. I rebooted, so I should be good. <laughs> should be good. All right. So I'm going to find my fish image, and I'm going to drag my fish image into here. Okay, oops, into my image manager. Then I drag my image into here. Then I hold control shift and I shrink him down. He's upside down, so we just keep doing that. Oops, let me. Dead. He is. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go. So I'm going to hit one so I can face the fish the correct direction. I'm going to zoom in on my fish here. Control shift, zoom in on that picture. And I'm just going to line this up. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the whole part of this, but then this will be like the next part. And then all I do is make sure that I'm painting through, which I am. Make sure that my projection is not set to just front, it's projecting through the object. And then when I do this, and I hit Alt. It's writing out my texture right now, so it's waiting. No, it's not. It's dying. Yeah, it's dying. It's dull. No, think positive. <laughs> it's going to Mari and Maya. Now, another thing we'll have to do is all of these areas that are super white, like these, I'll have to bring this into Photoshop and use that as transparency. So I say anywhere it's super white, like around this area or this area, basically make it transparent. That way we don't see the white on the fish. What? A shark? Yeah, you can do a shark. Uh, the biggest thing, like I said, is just finding a good picture of a fish. If you found an image that is like this, that's just too much stuff going on, um, uh, or if you found, like if you want to do a shark, you just got to get that profile. So we can do an narwhal. You can do an narwhal, yeah. <laughs> As long as you find a profile of him. There he is. And then also try to find one that doesn't have like highlights like this because obviously that would cause issues because those highlights would be permanently on there. See? I didn't do it. So now it's textured on both sides. See how simple that is? All right. Now, the only kind of weird thing here, if we look closely, is I've painted that fin on the side of his skin. <laughs> so I'd have to go in there and airbrush that out. But I'm not really too concerned about it because we're not going to get that close to it. Okay, we'll be kind of like back here from the fish, so we don't really see that there's a fin painted on the side of his scales. Um, so then we go to channels, we right-click on color, we export the flattened-out version of our fish, and we put this inside of our P drive here. Here, work. I'm in the wrong project. I'm to get to where you need to go. You know, work, fish, source images, export. So now inside of my images, I should have, there's my fish. 
Okay? That's good. Gorgeous. All right. So then the next part of that would be going through and just texturing it and then doing all the other stuff. Okay? That's plenty to get you started. That should take, you saw the process. It's polygon cube, really low resolution. There's nothing crazy here. It's just making sure that you have the right divisions. Um, if you don't listen to me, your fish will end up with too many divisions and then you'll have to start over. If you go like this, like that, and I've seen this before, and then you try to lay out the UVs on that, it's gonna be a lot harder to do. If you try to animate something like that, it's a lot harder to do. Just to give you an idea, we're gonna have a bunch of these fish in the scene. Uh, create emitter. Okay, I want to, like I said before, talk about uh, dynamic stuffs. Uh, play every frame. That's fine. Okay. And let me make this go really fast. There we go. All right. So each of these dots will eventually be replaced by a fish. So if I take this fish and I do that replacement, and I'm showing this now because I want you to see what it's going to do, so you realize how slow this is going to make our stations go. So you can see how um, it's actually going pretty quick right now. Crank it up even more. <laughs> when I don't want it to. All right. Holy cow. <laughs> Darn these new computers. Um, so this is obviously a f flash flood of fish right here, but uh, yes. No, no, that's way too big for a school. I'd say they're running for something that's gonna kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a lot of debt for me. Yeah. <laughs> debt. <laughs> so this will slow down your machine if you have a low resolution fish. You can have three times as many fish, and it won't hurt your scene. Okay, and if you get this, I hit stop. Did you stop? Okay. If you get this process worked down to a, a rather quick, like I'm surprised I was able to get as far as I did in 27 minutes, kind of explaining and modeling and texturing and getting the fish back into Maya. Um, but if you get this process down, think about this: you could have not only your one fish in the scene, but you could have multiple fish. What would it take? three hours, you have four or five different fish to really kind of complete the scene and make sure you understand the processes and really create something cool. Um, especially if you took something like this even, brought this picture into Photoshop, changed the colors, now you have an orange fish that looks like this, and a yellow one or a green one. Um, very simple stuff to do once you have the process down for all of it. Mm -hmm. When you set um, like the particle expander, if you had like say two different fish and mm -hmm. then expand it, would they overlap each other? They could, yes. Even these fish here, um, if we could actually see anything, some of these fish are hitting each other and going through each other. Okay, The particles are these dots, and so if these two dots are right next to each other, they will collide and move away from each other. All right? But the problem is the dot is here and the fish is there. So they have to get like within a certain distance before they actually hit each other. So let me uh, take this down to something more reasonable and maybe we'll actually see the fish do this. And I'll even take the emitter speed down to like 10, like that, there we go. And I'll even shrink it down, there we go. So right now we have a bunch of fish, of course they're going to collide with each other. <laughs> Use default material. Do you have to do any like movement animated on the fish at all? Or? Yes. So this is only part of it. This part is just the fish, okay? And right now they're not moving, so if we were to render it out, maybe we would get by with it, but what we wanna do is rig him so he actually like looks like he's wet, um, swimming, right? So his fins are moving, his tail is moving. Um, just keep swimming. And then if we really wanna get crazy, we launch the fish. Oops, let's, we need less fish so it goes quicker. There we go. There we go. 
Okay, lots of stuff we can do with it once we have our fish done, okay? So once you're done with your other stuff, it's rendering, then you can start working on the fish. Low resolution box model, find a good image of a fish, um, keep everything super low res, especially, you know, like I said. And right now, right today during this lecture, it's going pretty quick, but I guarantee you it won't, okay?